UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced so-called Tier 4 restrictions for the London area and the southeast of England starting December 20th, effectively locking down about a third of the UK population. The health minister called the situation out of control. Countries are banning flights from the UK. The justification for these restrictions is a newly identified genetic mutation in the coronavirus. The story has been a sensation in the media. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the science and talk about what we know and importantly, what we don't know about this new strain of the virus. I'm going to answer the following questions. What is the mutation? Where did the mutation come from? And has this mutation really caused an increase in infections? So let's start with the first question. What is the mutation we're talking about? Remember first that the coronavirus is a single-stranded RNA virus just like Zika, Dengue, or influenza. The RNA contains the genetic code used to produce the coronavirus. In the case of SARS-CoV-2, the genome comprises a chain of 29,881 nucleotides. This sequence of nucleotides is the blueprint for making amino acids that are used to build the actual virus particle. RNA viruses mutate a lot. That's their trademark. Scientists have been sequencing the genes of the coronavirus throughout 2020, looking for changes in the genetic code and creating a type of family tree. The mutation in England has been called the B117 lineage. This B117 lineage has three important mutations, all on the spike protein, which are the spikes on the outside of the virus shell. The spikes are also what are used to enter to human cells via the ACE2 receptor. Probably the most interesting mutation in the B117 lineage is called N501Y. The name N501Y means that the mutation has caused the amino acid at site 501 to become tyrosine, symbol Y, whereas earlier versions of the virus had created the amino acid asparagine, or symbol N. Because this amino acid is part of what is called the receptor binding domain, or RBD, the N501Y mutation could affect how readily the virus gets into human cells. More on that later. So where did this mutation come from? Viruses mutate, we know that. But what's interesting about this lineage is that there are 14 changes to amino acids in this lineage that seem to have happened before it was detected. That's a huge jump, whereas normally changes are detected one at a time. Instead, it seems that nearly all of the 14 changes occurred within a single human before being transmitted on. This has led to a hypothesis that an immunodeficient patient who was chronically infected for several months created a breeding ground for mutations, harboring a diverse community of virus forms. Then, perhaps convalescent plasma, which is full of antibodies, was administered for therapy, which then put selective pressure on the many new strains of virus in this immunodeficient individual. So, you have a bunch of different versions of the virus, and then you pick out the very best one. That's a hypothesis put forth by 10 researchers in the UK. Regardless of the process, it seems pretty clear that this lineage originated in England. And that brings us to the third and final question. Does this matter? Are these mutations really causing the virus to spread faster? Let's start with the claims. Boris Johnson said that the virus is 70% more transmissible, which was widely reported in the media. The truth is, this is where our knowledge about what's going on reaches its limits. Scientists can observe the mutations and how common they are. Researchers can use models to estimate the effect these changes have on how the virus functions. In fact, computer models have shown that this N501Y mutation could make the coronavirus really good at docking with ACE2 receptors. But ultimately, the effect in the real world is subject to many more confounding factors. It's complex. Even the observation that the virus seems to be more prevalent in the fast-moving infections is only a correlation. To date, the most famous mutation has been the D614G mutation, which was also on the spike protein. It has been blamed for the outbreaks in the U.S. and Europe. But a recent paper suggests that even this mutation may not have increased transmissibility. The correlation seen in England may just be a bit of circumstantial evidence. 
B117 may just be the lucky virus that was found circulating in a population that was more mobile and densely packed, like London. Time will tell, but it will take more time to determine whether it was this mutation or the behavior of the humans who had it that was really to blame for the higher cases and transmission in England. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some other videos.